Do you want to go straight? Huh. Hmm. Do what? You're screaming out working with the system. Do you want to just go straight? Go straight. Hey, Dale, Dale, Dale. Okay. <clears throat> and just when you thought it was safe, it is absolutely, positively not on this rainy afternoon. Good evening to you. Welcome again to Steal, the most controversial television talk show anywhere in the country, in the world, on the planet, in the universe. Thank you for being here with me on this. When it's raining. It just starts raining out of nowhere. I was sitting in the office, and I got up from behind my desk when it got in my recliner, balled up, and took a nap. All right, but I'm here, and I'm ready to go. We are in the midst here in Memphis of a political season. Now, let me say something to some of you candidates who have called me. Don't, nothing happened with me without some money. Okay? And that's it. There is nothing that's going to happen on this show without some monkeys. You, you, you have to pay your way. Don't look for anyone to do something free for you, at least not me, okay? I, and I wanna put that out there because I've had a couple of people who said, well, you ought to do it because I'm the best candidate. No, this is a business. And, you know, really, if you win, is on you. It, you have to prepare to be in these political races. You have no business running if you do not have the finances to finance a campaign. So I, I'm telling all of you uh, candidates who come at me left-sided, I don't do it for free. I don't do it as a community service. Uh, I do it because this is how I make my monkeys. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what you want to hear. Thank you, Queen. Um, tonight, I'm going to be interviewing a gentleman who says he wants to be on the city council. Uh, city council district, super district eight, position two. We're going to see tonight. I, I'm not going to softball him. I'm going to see if he's ready to be a councilman. But even greater than that, what is his benefit to the community in being elected to the Memphis City Council? So we're going to be talking with Brian Salisbury. I'm going to open up the phone lines and allow you to also speak with Brian Salisbury so that he can tell you 
why he should be. Who is this guy that calls himself Brian L. Salisbury? I think he's about 43 years old. Is he prepared? What's his plan? What's his agenda? Because without an agenda, I don't care who it is that's running, they should not get your vote until they persuade you that they are able to do the job. I'm going to give him the space to say what he needs to say. And uh, we'll see at the end of the interview if he's able, capable, ready, or prepared to be the city council person. He's ran for this position before, and we'll talk about that as well. All right, hey T, tell you what, because I want to get him up here. Um, Let's go and take a commercial break, and then we're going to get right in it, right here on the Thaddeus Matthews Show. Where did Dale go? Get this right and then get a chair up here. I can't get the screen to turn around. What are you doing? Bathroom? What you doing? And the, I don't know what's happening this time. Who is that? John. I don't know. Oh, 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 okay. Let's run your ass up across the camera. And that's how I found. Tell them to send me if something I might need. Mm. You ready to mic up? All right, come on up. Yes, sir. Can I take my bring my coffee? And you up there? do what? You can drink your coffee if you want to. Okay. Hand me those keys right there. All right, those of you on Facebook, we're not streaming the normal way. You live in the studio, so you get it just the way it is. Turn, Dale, put that down. Come here, set this up for me so I can see whether he in the uh, picture. Uh, uh oh. What is this? Oh, this ain't no work sideways, do it? Yeah, that's fine on that. You don't like it sideways. You keep saying that, but you're gonna, you ain't gonna be able to see none of the stuff that you got going on. Do you want me to pull it back over that white sign? But you ain't gonna be able to read it. Mm -hmm. so good. And these niggers, is this, is it setting too, that's setting too low. Is it showing that way? Probably. I don't look at that. Yeah, 
Huh? Yeah, my guy cut off my mouth. Who did a good job? Who did a good job? Those of you on Instagram, are y'all seeing it? Why it ain't going now? I don't particularly like it this way, but. Are you picking me up? And welcome back to the Thaddeus Matthew Show. My guest, Brian Salisbury, running for City Council Super District 8, Position 2. Brian, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Brian, what areas does District 8 2 uh, carry? Well, basically, uh, the, the short answer is, is is pretty much half of the city. You're talking about anywhere from uh, Kirby area all the way down to Riverside Drive, even over into Fraser 38127. So we have, you have 3818, uh, 38118, 38116, um, 3811, uh, 38106, excuse me. So you're talking about Pretty much half of the city. Okay. What parts of Frazier do you have? Well, it's it's a little, the, the specifics on the outline of it, it would be a little difficult to say. Uh, we know 38127 is within that scope. Um, but as far as the particulars of how the map is, is outlined, I would have to pull a map to show. You haven't pulled the map? I have. So what areas? of Frazier do you cover? So we're talking about, um, this, the best answer I can give on it is 38127, all inclusive of 38127. Okay. So you, you don't go into Raleigh at all? No. Okay. Who is Brian Salisbury? Well, simply, um, that is, uh, I'm a native Memphis. I actually uh, went to Kirby High School and once I left Kirby High School, uh, I went to, uh, was fortunate enough to go and study at Howard in D.C. And in Howard in D.C. I studied finance, and then from there I was fortunate enough to go and study at Harvard uh, mm -hmm. in one of their programs. So what I did was um, I pr pr primarily worked in the financial services industry throughout New York and Washington, D.C., um, and would come home periodically. Then what happened with me is, is that I came back home and started a real estate mm -hmm. uh, management development company. I'm a, I'm a licensed real estate broker mm -hmm. in, in Tennessee. So uh, from that, ultimately I got married to my first spouse and had three kids out of that marriage. Uh, and then afterwards, um, I felt like anytime someone serves or want, wishes to serve, uh, it was important to me to want to uh, go and explore a military background. 
So uh, at 35, I actually entered the uh, United States Air Force. At 35? At 35 okay. years of age. Because it was important to me to have, um, to be able to say I served my country and to be able to say I've been there, I've, I've covered that particular track um, and bring a holistic picture mm -hmm. uh, to, to the citizens. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've done developments uh, in the city. There was a property called National Properties. I never will forget off making a national. Mm -hmm. And that particular property, uh, Thaddeus, I recall, uh, residents were concerned about drugs and, and prostitution in the area. And uh, HUD out of Atlanta deemed the, 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 the property a nuisance. So they had to have that property demolished. I was awarded the contract. We demolished it. We joint ventured on it and got state mm -hmm. tax credits and put up new low-income housing there. So these things I, I've done, personally I've done. Uh, right down the street, get well gardens. I worked on that project and, uh, and, and, and had time and redeveloped that. So a large scope of my work has been in creating a better community where blighted areas have been in our community. So are you married now? I am. Okay. What's your wife's name? My wife's name is Raquel. Raquel. Salisbury. Okay. And, and, and I asked you, mm -hmm. were you married? Mm -hmm. Because on your disclosure, you carry 6336 Smith Summer Way. Right. So who lives at 3287 Darby Dan Cove? Well, that's a great question. My spouse and I, at the time, uh, bought a secondary home uh, for real estate purposes. As I explained, I'm a real estate developer by trade. And we were fortunate enough to get a, a great property uh, at a decent value. So we bought that property as an investment property, and uh, that's that on there. So you do you live in Germantown? No. No, I reside in the city of Memphis. Okay. So you're just in this $246,000 house in Germantown. Is that sitting there? No, actually, uh, what we've done is uh, we kind of have it in a rental situation where okay. we're getting, you know. So you got income. someone renting the property. Right, there you go, and getting in, some income. In, in Germantown. Right. Because I would hate to think that you were running for office in the city of Memphis and you're actually living in Germantown. Now you know I do my homework. Absolutely. Okay, now okay. I, I, I want you to do okay, your homework. Because okay. when I ran across that, I said, now, how is he running for city council with a Germantown address? Okay. So you're running for office mm -hmm. and you've ran for this position before. Right. In fact, you ran for it, I believe, in 2000. And seven, you ran against Janice Woodenlaw. I remember, Mr. Okay. I thought you had to be crazy to even think that you could beat Janice Woodenlaw. Right. Uh, there were several candidates, if I can remember correctly, in that race. Mm -hmm. In that race, you got 1,800 and 73 votes. Mm -hmm. What makes you think? And you ran for Congress. Well, well on that, I had to rescind that. On hey, Congress? On Congress, I did. You, you got out of, I, I you got got out out of that race. Because I, in my position uh, at the time, I was serving as a union steward for the Department of Treasury, and, and the Hatch Act pro prohibits you to run for okay. a part Okay, so you got out, I got you got out, out of the race. congressional race. Exactly. Any All right. Okay. You, right. you only got less than 2,000 votes right. in, was that, 2007. Mm -hmm. What makes you a winnable candidate? Okay. What makes you think that you can win in this race. Well, well, let me explain something to you about that race. Mm -hmm. um, in that particular race at the time, um, I didn't put any dollars towards allocating towards the campaign. 
and, and, and quite honestly, I must be honest and say that I was a newbie to how the system actually worked, mm -hmm. being that I was in my 20s, but you know, right there at, a, at, at around that time, or latter 20s. And that part, I think, was a growing process to understand how the system works, to understand what mechanisms you need in order to make a campaign. You didn't know you needed no money? Well, the thing of it was, was that, you know, when you're young and ambitious, sometimes you jump out. I don't, now here's the thing. I don't uh, knock the fact that uh, my love and passion for Memphis uh, has was there then and still mm -hmm. there now. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, it's about uh, when you feel there's an unction on your life to do what is right by your city, then you should, and by your people, you should. So you ask the question, why now? Mm -hmm. Well, it's a big difference from 2007 to 2019. And mm -hmm. let me point this out to you. One, financially, I'm in a much better situ situation. Mm -hmm. Two, I've had the opportunity uh, to see other campaigns do things in such a format, in such mm -hmm. a way, that has allowed for success for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then three, um, after these years have passed, I've actually built my resume uh, in such a way where I think all of my uh, assets and all of my education and all of my work ethic and things I've gained through the years, I would love to be able to share that back with my community. Okay. Let me ask you, there, there are some things that are uh, of great concern to the citizens of this city. What is your agenda, your platform, your plan when it comes to public safety? You know, public safety to me, uh, and if you're speaking in the terms of, uh, as it relates to crime, if, if you're speaking in those terms, I want to. I would love to be able to talk with you about that. All right. Okay. So as it relates to crime, I break it up into youth crime and adult crime. So for me, when I see youth crime go on, I instantly think about, especially as a father of three, I instantly think about what are the things that I had to do to employ my kids to be successful. What things did I had to do in order to give them a track pathway? that would lead to success, that would keep them in school, that would keep them uh, positive. One of the things that I see that we do, we do not invest enough money at all into any after school programs for our children like we should. That's vitally important. Most progressive cities are putting substantial amount of dollars in behind mentors that will go out and train kids uh, in, in basketball, football, what we what I see in this city oftentimes is when you pull up to the light, you have three or four kids run up to you with a bucket and say, well, give me. Even if you give the child something and then the child says, thank you, that's really not the format in which I believe we should be teaching our kids. Yeah, I, I hear that, Brian, but, so, so, but you're, so, you're still not telling me uh, what the agenda, when we talk about crime, people who are victims of crime are not concerned about adult crime and youth crime. They're, they're concerned about crime, period. A absolutely. Okay, so what is it that you would propose as a city council person that's representing basically inner city districts and zip codes, what is it that you propose that be, is done about crime? The mentoring program, great. That's a great idea. But when it comes to the safety of people, what is it that you think that the council needs to mandate, make ordinances on, that is going to make people in this community feel safe? Well, one of the things is I'm a proponent of utilizing technology. Um, technology is very important. We have a lot of people, for instance, on our street that drive tremendously fast up and down the street. And you've seen these, these blue light cameras where you could actually monitor, where people can monitor what's going on in the street. That's essential too. That should just not be in the private communities. That should be affordable to all of our communities. 
whereby the police can watch our presence. And also, I believe we should put more dollars behind increasing the pay of police officers. That's vitally important as well as extensive training. Now, one of the things that we've seen in the community, we are missing the mark as it relates to community and police relations. Mm -hmm. And it's not enough just to say, well, uh, we're just gonna take the testimony of the officer. We've seen time and time again where well, sometimes these reports come in and when you look at the camera, it's very different than what the officer is stating. Mm -hmm. So it's vitally important that we get sound people, a sound basis and knowledge of what took place, mm -hmm. analyze the data, and mm -hmm. be able to prosecute. I believe also what we need to do, the reason I, let me say this, the reason I broke it up into youth crime and adult crime because there are some things specifically on the youth side of the table that we desperately need to. Such so, as other other than other than the mentoring program, what is it that you propose as a council person that's going to make the people in your district feel safe? What is it you're going to do? What is it? What type of ordinance? What type of laws would you like to see in place? that's going to make citizens feel comfortable in their homes. Well, for instance, let's say kids that are up under the age of 16 years of age. If you after 10 o'clock, 1030, if you're not working, there's no reason for that kid to be out alone by themselves. So what do you propose? So this is what I propose. I propose that we explore ordinances whereby if a child is not with the parent, there is no reason for them to be downtown 16 years of age. But, I, Brian, are you aware we have that? Oh, absolutely. Okay, we, we already have absolutely. that as but, an but, audience. But in certain areas, I'm saying in areas whereby we're talking about even if it's, you know, you're just out and about. Because we got to be cognizant and aware. No, no, no. Are you, the audience is not in certain areas. There is a curfew law. Are you aware of the I am cur you, I am you're aware of the curfew absolute, law? Absolutely. So if there is already a curfew law in place, what do you propose that is going to be done or should be done based on the law that we already have? Well, again, I think we need to explore when I say community and police relations. I'm saying we need to really put forth the energy and effort to say, let's set aside programs whereby we can introduce kids to police officer, police officers whereby that relationship can be grown in that community. Well, well, well why not? Why not say, as a council person, that we're going to create a resolution and give it to the mayor who is the boss of the police director that we have these laws already on the book we don't have to create that's true a, a new law that the mayor would direct the his police department to enforce those laws that are already on the book. I think that's absolutely the first start because if we have laws in place, we definitely have to push for that. But again, I'm going back to that relationship. We got to better the relationship between community and police. Okay, when we speak of police officers, and you said the education of police officers, mm -hmm. what is your feeling and your views on the benefits mm -hmm. that? the city officials, especially police and firemen, have lost under this present administration? Well, you know, that is, that's a great question. Um, as far as what they've lost, uh, I, I can't say, I, I will say this on that. You know, we talked about uh, retirees' health benefits. And I went down and argued for the council that it was the right thing to do uh, to honor the retirees' health benefits. Mm -hmm. uh, I still believe that. Uh, I still believe that we should honor an agreement that we established with them. Now, uh, 
as far as what I have learned within after speaking with officers is that some officers have stated that the right people have not been promoted within rank for various different reasons. Uh, I believe uh, we should have an oversight uh, committee established to, to make sure that there's no nepotism in the system, that we're getting the best of the best officers to direct our, our, our younger officers, but, our subordinate officers. See, Brian, you're taking me around the mall bit. But... No, I don't want to take yes, you. Yes, you are. You, you take, because you didn't answer what I asked you. Okay. Well, I asked okay. you. Right? What I asked you was concerning the benefits of the police officers. Do you think that as a council person mm -hmm. that you would vote to make sure that the police and the fire department get a raise, get all of the benefits back that they once had? Absolutely. Would you, you, would you vote for that? Absolutely. So you would vote for a three to five percent increase in pay? I would, yes. Okay. You would vote for uh, the return of the benefits as far as insurance is concerned? I would. Okay. All right. My guest is Brian Salisbury, candidate. And I'm going to open up the lines in just a little bit because when I, let me ask you this before we go. Bill Street. What's your view on Bill Street? What's your view on the pain to get on Bill Street? What's your view on the contract on Bill Street that the city has not honored as of yet? What's, what's your view on that? You know, uh, paying to get on Bill Street, I, I wasn't uh, personally uh, for that. I, I think one of the, the, the bigger uh, beauties of Bill Street is that you afforded people to uh, go up and down Bill Street. Uh, now, I do believe uh, employing um, security measures, excuse me, uh, making sure younger, younger folks are not on Bill Street after certain hours is the right thing to do. So how, how do you do that? As far as checkpoints? Yeah. Well, I mean, right now they're doing checkpoints. I mean, you know, that's a standard practice they're doing right now. So they're doing it the right way. I think that the question you ask me is, do I support them taking payment? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, I don't really, I don't support that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just feel like it, it detracts away from the essence of what Beale Street should mean. If you got, you know, going down and just, if you just want to walk to see, you know, what what uh, restaurants you like and what restaurants you don't like. So I, I wasn't a fan of that. When we talk about Bill Street and we talk about a street that once had black historical value that no longer has that black historical value, are you familiar with the contract of Bill Street with the city of Memphis? I am familiar with that contract. Uh, actually, my company, I don't know if if, uh, if you know this, but we were one of the bidders for managing Bill Street. Um, I presented on that contract. Um, so as an, uh, it, it, it didn't come to pass, uh, but I am familiar at the time. It's been about two or three years since uh, I looked at the contract. So are you familiar with the fact that Bill Street uh, has not paid its debts to the city of Memphis? Mm -hmm. Neither has it paid its debt to the Bill Street Development Corporation. Mm -hmm. As a city council person, how would you protect the Essence of it. The, well, the essence of maybe a good word of Bill Street, the Bill Street Development Corporation, mm -hmm. a black 
company or black organization that brought the funding to Bill Street that has never received its money that is still in the court system even now. Mm -hmm. What would you propose that the city would do to protect the black organization that came into play that has made Bill Street what it is? Right. Well, you know, again, in that particular case, you're financially liable, point blank. I mean, you're financially liable. If you, if you made that agreement with that organization like they have, the city is financially liable. But, but the, that, that has been in place over 25 years, and, and the council, for some reason, has not moved to make those things happen. It was found that there was a lot of misappropriation of funds mm -hmm. by John Elkerson and the group, the former management team, that hundreds of thousands of dollars is due to the black organization. What are you going to do that, as a council person, that would make the Bill Street Development Corporation make black folk feel comfortable on Bill Street. And, and I, I'll give you the biggest point. You do know that taking up money on Bill Street is unconstitutional, okay? It's a city street. So what would you do? Let's say Miss Lucille Cajun. You know Lucille Cajun? I've heard the name. Okay, you've heard the name. She's the president of the Bill Street uh, Development Corporation. If she came down and said, Mr. Councilman, we have been to federal court. Federal court says that this is a violation, but the council has approved it. Would you as a councilman say, fellow council persons, we are wrong. We are making citizens pay to come on a public street that has been funded not only by local dollars, but have been funded by federal dollars. What would your position be to Ms. Catron if she came to you and said, Mr. Councilman, I need your help, I need your support? Well, it's very simple. Um, you know, I, I'm a, an auditor by trade. I'm always looking at numbers and exposure. That's part of the business I'm in. I would support her. I would want to know the financial cost that she has incurred, and I think that's a a, 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 a meaningful conversation that should be had amongst the council to show that this is what uh, she's lost over these years. All right, let's take a commercial break, and we'll be back with Brian Salisbury here on the Thaddeus Matthews Show. Is your Instagram there? Huh? Instagram there? Do what? Instagram. Yeah, what's wrong with it? Yeah. Yeah, they can't see it. They can't see, they can't get the message. Huh? They're not able to do anything, they're all over Facebook and YouTube. Okay. We do it and set it up Would you be, you wouldn't be able to read so it too far. Yeah, that's all. That's all. I think you know a lot. Fix it, Dale. I need to find which picture I want to do. So what we gonna do now? Uh, got questions? Yeah, uh, I mean, I'll, 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 I'll keep going. Bob Rush. Huh? How many followers do you think he got on it? Yeah.
All right, we are in commercial break. Line this, you're gone. This is a damn TV show. You go. How many more? One more. Okay. That's the last one. You going to breathe, you go. I didn't welcome back to the Thaddeus Smanthy show. My guest is Brian. Um, Salisbury, he wants to be your city council person, Super District 8, position 2. You represent Frazier. What was your feelings about the recent riot that took place in that community? As far as uh, the young man shooting, is that what you're speaking of when you say that? You know what the riot that was for? Oh, you got to tell me what the ride. I mean, there have been different. How many rides have it been, Brian? Right. Every time we look around, we got different. Right. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, brother. Well, come on now. <laughs> come on now. Let me say this. Let me say this. <laughs> on, on that. And the, I, wait a minute, wait a minute, Brian. The riot that we had a couple of a months ago in Frasia. Mm -hmm. What's your feelings on that? Well, here's what I. This is how I feel about it. Uh, and I speak as an African-American man when I say this. In our community, we have to be able to express. Quit hitting the table, you're shaking it. Oh, stuff. Sorry. We, we have to be able to express our views and be heard. And I think what happens with riots, I don't, I, I, I support our people when it, when it comes to expression, so long as we're not hurting anyone. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute, Brad. Do you know what that, riot was about. I do. Okay, what was it about? If we're talking about the young man that was killed. Yes. Yes, I do. I do know what it's about. And, uh, and, and the young man uh, shot in the back. Uh, I do know. What, what man was. shot in the back? It was a young man that was shot in the back. Who? I mean, I, I, I couldn't just I call it the young man's name. Myself. In, in what incident are you speaking of? I'm speaking of the incident that took place where the young man got shot in the back and the officer's cameras were off. Are, are we speaking of? No, no, I'm talking about the Frasier incident, yeah. the area that you're wanting to be a representative of. Right. I'm talking about when the marshals went in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That, that's the, why I was saying several, when the marshals went in. So you support the expression that took place at night? No, we talking about two different situations. No, we ain't had but one riot. There was no riot in that particular incident that you're speaking of. Well, let me let me be clear about, so now that I understand what you're speaking uh, in I reference to. Explain. Yeah. So, as it relates to the marshal, uh, my, from, from what I've seen, and I want to be clear about uh, from what I've seen, because all the evidence has not come forward, 
Um, I'm talking, come on, Brian. I'm talking about the actions. You just said you support the expression. So I'm asking you bluntly, plainly, did you support the actions of the people in Frazier on that particular night? Well, when you say that, I want I want to ex express and say how I feel about it. Based upon what I saw, I saw now I don't I don't support the action of some people where you saw the police car being damaged. I don't support that, but I do support those that go out to express when things are done in such a fashion whereby it's not uh, clear to the public and we're concerned because black people have been in so many instances uh, battered by certain police officers. So when you say that- But wait a minute, Brian. That particular night, what action brought on the rioting, the destruction of city property? I don't, I don't just, I agree with you on that. I'm in agreement with you on that. I'm just simply saying when you say rioting, are you including those that, um, in, 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 in anything that those that were involved in the riot, those that were throwing bricks. I, I don't, I don't support that at all, at all. But I see, but you, I do, you, but I do, but but I want to be clear about this because some people will say, well, you don't support uh, freedom of speech as it relates to us going out and questioning what happened. I support that. I have no problem with someone going out lawfully and saying, look, we would like to know what happened in this situation. I support that. That's needed. So with this incident happening, and you're in Frazier, as a Frazier representative, what is your proposal of what you would do to economically empower that particular community? What's your plan of and, economics? And, and, okay, now let, that's a great question. Right now, that is. We are on the verge of a transforma transformation economically. You know, there was an article, I don't know if you saw this, about a week or so ago, put out by Federal Express. They are putting in $450 million into, their, into the hub with new automations. Hey, did you see that? No. Brian, so, so, Brian, you all over the damn place. So let, yeah, let, wait a minute. No, 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 no. You're all over the place. So You're not, you're not answering questions specifically. What is your plan? Give me this. Give me the answer to what is your plans of economically empowering Frazier and the inner city? Let me broaden it for you. Mm -hmm. What is your plan of economics? Don't give me about the studies and nothing that you read. Give me your plan, your agenda as a person that wants to be on the council that you can say to the people in Frazier, you can talk to the people in Whitehaven. You, had, you said 116, right? right. You said one, 106, mm -hmm. South Memphis. Right. Uh, what is your plan to bring economic empowerment into those communities? Okay, for instance, what I believe is, what I want to do is, is instead of just giving tax true abatements to these corporations that come in, we want to be able to have some parse, some percentage of that, those dollars go back into those programs, and excuse me, into those communities, and give those communities some funding to say we're going to improve upon uh, technology advancement, we're going to improve upon job learning skills, we're going to improve upon giving uh, small business loans. Those are the kinds of things that I want to push for when I'm a council member. When I, when I look at white council person, when I look at white council persons, they do for their communities. Right. Okay. I, I hear all of this about abatements and let's give abatements and things of that nature. But what are you going to do with the citizens? How are you going to address the citizens on this is something that is tangible that I can do? We look in our communities, there is a lack of businesses. Does 38107 fall into your? Uh, it does. It does. Mm -hmm. So are you familiar with New Chicago? I am. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Economic economically. Yeah, mm -hmm. that community is mm -hmm. bankrupt. Yeah. You you no longer have any industry in those communities. So if you had a meeting in New Chicago and they said, Mr. Council person, what can we do to bring business into this community? What can we do to build the infrastructure, not just downtown, but let's build it up in our community? What you going to say to them? Well, actually, you know, when we look at Memphis 3.0, uh, that plan is already out there and it's addressing areas uh, that are extending all the way up to New Chicago area. So what we want to do is, is when these, these, these plans come out whereby you don't want just so much gentrification where people that once lived in the area can't afford to live in the area. We want to create a situation whereby we can say we're not going to allow for rents to increase so far that lower income people cannot afford to live in that area. 3.0 is on hold. It's, you know, the financing of 3.0 is something that may or may not happen. But what about when you sit on the council with your white council pards mm -hmm. and your white council pards take money uh, from the coffers and take it into their white areas and you sit on the council and okay, you go along with, will you just be another go along um, with the white folk niggas? No, I, no, that's huh? not me. That's not me, okay. because I'm going to tell you, one person I admired on the council was Joe Brown. Uh, council member Brown. What has Joe Brown did in North Memphis? Well, I said admired. I mean, I, I can honestly you say. See, you, but you got to admire I, I, him I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you why I admired him. What? When, when we put forth the plan to, to redevelop the Coliseum, he was one of the few council members that reasonably sat down and really listened to what we had to present. Brian, I'm talking about North Memphis, and you're telling me that you admire uh, Joe Brown. Joe Brown ain't did a damn thing in North Memphis. He ain't did nothing to economic. He's been there for 20-some years. He has done nothing to economically empower that community. I hear politicians, I'm so sick and damn tired of hearing politicians give me all of this around the world of stuff, and you have no specifics. You come in here this evening, Brian, without any specifics on what you're going to do or what you propose to do. I look at Joe Brown, I look at the other black council persons when they were building the concourse, okay? The white council people who even on the council had conflicts because they worked for the real estate agents that brought it into being. All I see and I saw is white dollars, the white folk getting what they want. And I looked all around the area, the, that little area around uh, New Chicago, Klondike, Balwala, didn't get any of the fallout of those dollars. I'm sick and tired of black politicians setting their ass on the council and black folk not getting anything out of it. So tell me specifically what black folk can look for from you. I don't want to hear all this political talk, okay? I don't want to hear all this educated talk. I don't want to hear all of this taking me around the mulberry. I want to hear what your agenda is specifically for black folk in this community. We are 70 to 80% of the population. What can black folk count on you doing for them? Well, I can honestly say this. One thing I want to push for is for more minority participation as it relates to contracts that are coming out of mm -hmm. city members. That's essential. Mm -hmm. Case in point in Washington, D.C. They are a strong municipal, or, uh, municipal organization whereby they support local businesses. We failed in that area. We give tax incentives to outsiders, but we don't push local businesses. So what are you going to do? See, I understand the contract deal. We get less than 3% of contracts. Right. But, but there's more to it, though, Thaddeus, that we okay. have to look at. 
Well, so, let, let, let me let me step back. We got to look at this whole thing in its totality. You got funding, funding. Those two things have to be met prior to even getting to the part of being able to do the contract. I, so, I, I understand that, but I see even companies who are funded, who have the proper insurances, mm -hmm. I see them getting uh, the shortfall, okay? I, there's a friend of mine uh, that had a tire company, okay? Got a contract with the city, a multi-million dollar contract with the city. Lost that contract because there were people in the administration that wanted a white company to have it. I saw nobody black fighting. I'm tired of, I'm tired of you chicken ass black Negroes on the council. Y'all ain't fighting for the folk, okay? And I'm sitting here, and, and let me tell you, let me just be honest with you. You ain't impressing me, okay? You're not impressing me as a person what, what? running for office because you're, you're vague, man. People want to hear. Those people that are sitting out there watching you and watching you on social media, they tired of the bullshit that politicians and folk that are running are trying to give. They don't want vague answers. And all I'm getting from you is vagueness. We want to know specifically when you're running for office, what benefit is it to us to not just give you a job, but what benefit is it that we, the people, are going to get from you being in office? What's going to be different about you than the other person? Well, I, I'm just, I, yeah, I'm just telling you. I'm pushing for a minimum of 20% uh, minority participation on all city contracts that come out. That's a minimum. I find it egregious to be 70% African-American and you have less than 3% that's actually going to African-American participation. That's what I'm uh, pushing for. But I'm also pushing for the fact that we have to position our smaller local businesses in such a capacity to give them, to aid them in the bonding they need, to aid them in those criteria, even if it comes in the form of training so that they're in a position when these contracts come that they're able to do it. For instance, mm -hmm. ABC uh, out of Texas. Do you remember that contract? It was a uh, MLG and W gave about $30 million that they gave, that they awarded this Texas company to come out and cut the trees on the power lines. Now, don't get me wrong. I know it's a very dangerous job cutting trees. Don't get me wrong, I know it's a very dangerous job and it requires bonding to, to facilitate that. But I don't see anything wrong with maybe taking 10 million and saying, listen, even if we take 500,000 and we have to put a smaller local business in a place to get a million dollar contract and offer 10 contracts at a million dollars and say, listen, you take this stretch uh, popular from here to, 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 to there. And, and allow for the money to be dispersed more through local businesses and not just subcontracting all the time directly from the large ones. You know, and even in that deal, that there is a black owned company here that is licensed and funded, and I believe it's Bean Contractors mm -hmm. that have all of the paperwork and they are a large business. What I'm saying to you is very simple, that we got to have fighters. And, and, I, and I, Dad, I, let, let me mention okay. something about, about that. As a council member, it's not just one council member. You have to have someone that knows how to negotiate, uh, that knows how to bring other council members to, together to say, listen, this is the right thing to do. That's what I believe I bring to the table. Because as you stated, uh, for time and time again, people are tired of politicians saying one thing, but when they get on, uh, get the seat, there's something else. And I just believe as a local business owner, I've been through the mill on that. I put contracts, I, I got, matter of fact, the deal we did with the Coliseum, don't you know there are companies that come and have come right behind it 
stolen all of the material we put out on the deal and, and, and it's receptive to many of the council members now. And we have to move away from that. Case in point, I mentioned to someone uh, on social media that I was coming to your show. I said, I'm coming to Thaddeus Matthews' show. I welcome the opportunity for you all to take a look and listen. And their comment, well, you had to pay him to get on the show. You did? Wait a minute. Well, here's, here's my point. Uh -huh. What's wrong with black folks working with black folks in media? Well, and, I don't and, look. Whoever that person, I don't give a damn about them. Yeah, you paid me. Well, okay, and, it, it and, costs money and, to be and, and I, I think that those who are watching will see that I ain't softballing you because you paid me. Because I've already told you, I ain't impressed. Well, okay, well, I, 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 I listen, you have not impressed me. Listen, I respect that right, from a standpoint, right. but here, here's my, here's my goal here. My goal is to come here to give the citizens a fair opportunity right. to see who I am, and that's what the, I'm about, and, that's and what I'm looking to do. Right. Case in point. Right. Uh, and, and that's what it is. But I don't softball politicians. You can pay me, and you paid me pretty good. Uh, I don't softball because your advertising is still uh, going to run. Now, let me ask you this. If blacks is 65%, or 70% according to the number, why the goal can't be that blacks get 65% of the contracts? Why we got to only get 20% if we are the majority in the city of Memphis? Why we got to get anything less than what our equal share is? Well, again, uh, I'm a proponent, you know, there are a lot of variables and I push for minority participation as much as possible. Uh, but at the same token, we got to have qualified companies. We got to have bondable companies. So there are more variables than just that mandate. My mandate has been that a minimum of that because of the fact that I think that's the right thing to do. If we can work stronger and do more, then great. I don't think, but I don't think we go for the minimum, okay? I, we make up the majority of this city. If they say it's 65 to 70 percent, it's got to be at least 80 percent because a whole lot of folks ain't let them census people come into the house. Right. So I don't think that we have to take less than anything that says that we are the majority. We should we should push for the large number. You in sales, you go for the top dollar, and then you negotiate down. your way down. But starting at 20 cents, the white boys on the council gonna say, no, we're gonna give you 10. <laughs> and and the Negroes, the good Negroes that's on the council, they can <laughs> say, okay, uh, that's what we're going to go for. I tell you what. Y'all sending me all of these messages. Um, what I'm going to do is take a commercial break. I got some folk I need to block on Instagram as well. And uh, we're gonna, I'm going to open up the phone lines and let you, the community, you, the citizens, I want you <clears throat> to ask the questions about your community that you want to ask, I want you to tell Mr. Salisbury uh, whether you're impressed with him, that you would vote for him, you wouldn't vote for him, what his strong points are, what is his weak spot. We'll do it all after this commercial break. All right. uh, let's see, who all needs to go? How's it, it ain't looking that good in your favor. Because they say you're all over the damn place, and you are. Well, you know, some of these questions, though, I'm like, you know, I, I got to make sure I understand where, you, where you're coming from. But you're supposed to come here prepared. It ain't about being prepared. I got to make sure at the end of the day. You didn't bring no paperwork with you. You didn't bring no notes with you. I you didn't bring, bring none of your You ain't got everything in your head that I'm going to talk about. 
You remember on our uh, the plan I sent you? Yeah, but I don't go by them. Okay, okay I don't go by that. Uh, you know, I I don't let nobody give me the questions. You know. No, I'm not trying to give you no questions. But, but I'm giving. But what I'm saying is the simple stuff I'm asking you tonight, or answer, you should know. Uh, I feel like I'm, again, you know, whatever we need to ask, let's ask. Okay. We got a lot of views here. Huh? You over here trying to read my stuff. Right. You need to get ready for these folk that's going to call you. All right, we're going to be all right. <laughs> that is a nice suit over there. But from what I'm reading here on social media, you ain't impressing the people. Well, you know, here's the thing. Uh, you gotta be able to tell the truth. And you gotta be able to tell your truth. And if someone is not impressed by what you're saying, they have a right to vote. If they wanna vote for Cheyenne, that's their vote, let them vote for Cheyenne. I'm gonna let you talk about the ballots too. Yeah. What's wrong? Laughing at me. What's she doing? Saying that you adopt the water in there? Oh, uh, Pink Panther. <laughs> Pink Panther? Are we on? Mm -mm. Okay. OTG doing it. One more. I want to thank all of the, the listeners to the uh, social media side as well. Well, they hear you to see. Okay. How many more, T? One more after this one. Hey, uh, Brie, I mean, Brie, ooh, Brie, <sighs> Brie? Just see how you're 
give her www.theerector.com. I said she might already have that written down. Huh? I said she might she might have that one already. Actually, she got that one. www.theerector.com. And welcome back to the Thaddeus Matthews, the most controversial television talk show anywhere in the city. Glad to have each and every one of you here on the program. And in just a few minutes, I'm going to open up the phone lines and let you talk to Mr. Salisbury. Maybe you missed something that... Uh, that I've missed. So I'm gonna give you the opportunity to just jump on in here. Uh, do, uh, Burnett, bye. Um, give y'all an opportunity to say <laughs> something. Is there something you want to say, Brian, before I open up these phone lines? Well, well absolutely. The first thing is for me, I wanna hear from the people. Uh, this is our opportunity to come together and see how we can make the city a safer city, uh, how we can make the city. Hold on, tell it, it's a dash, the, then dash erector.com, not dot, okay. Okay, we're, we're good. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I'm excited about, I wanna hear from the residents, I wanna hear from the citizens. So you tired of hearing from me? <laughs> I mean. This is my damn show. It's just, Look, okay, we, we, you want to hear from? No, no, this, this is my show. We want yeah, you. You want to hear? I don't give a damn who you want to hear from. Get I'll, you a show, <laughs> then you, then you can. Yeah, you got some say so, right? Well, we, now, I if you think I'm rough, some of these folks that's in the call no, here, I, listen, they can be rougher than me. I'm not worried about rough. What, okay. I, what I'm worried about at uh -huh. the end of the day is how to improve the livelihood of our citizens. So what's how you gonna do it? What's your plan to to increase the livelihood of the citizens? Well, again, I mean, if we're gonna take calls now, or you want to ask that? No, I ask you a damn question, okay, man. Let me damn. So damn. wait, 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 wait a minute. See, let me let you understand. I run this. Oh yeah. Okay, so don't don't tell me about what you, who you want to hear. From. I don't give a damn who you want to hear from. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, that's totally <laughs> immaterial who you want to hear from I asked you a question how do you because you brought it up you opened the door right. how do you propose to economically make the living of citizens in your district viable first of all that starts with education we have to have capital devoted towards job training skills that's first and foremost what can and you do? Then, what can you do about education? Well, one thing we want to do is we want to partner with organizations. You know, for instance, there are uh, at our church, Life Church. We have different mentorship programs. You go to Life Church. Yes, sir. You out there with the white folks? It's white and black. It's a uh, diverse go, community. Go, go on. <laughs> so, yeah. so what we want to do is is actually utilize those mentorship opportunities that where people can actually come in and get the training they need in order to say, well, look, this is where you are, this is where you could be. Even I have a mentor, even at my age right now, and it's vitally important because you need to know where you're going. Now, as far as livelihood, that is want to mention something to you what a lot of people uh, do in other progressive cities. They reach out to companies and corporations, exciting companies that may be uh, for instance, Indigo that came here out of Boston. Exciting company that's offering technology services to agriculture, the agriculture industry. We need to be focused on more corporations like that coming here that may be small in size from 100 million to, to, to 200 million in size, but they present an excellent opportunity for growth for our citizens. You know, one of the things in listening the minority 
in this city is white. But they enjoy the majority status because of the mindset I'm hearing tonight, okay? I don't hear the mindset of fighting for people. I don't hear you, and Brian, I'm being totally honest, and I've been opening up the phone line, I don't hear you with a plan. I don't hear you coming forth and saying, this is my proposal. See, anytime I see a politician walk in here, sit here with me, and he ain't got no paper in his hand. He ain't made no note. It ain't all up there because we you I don't we don't miss that. Uh you ain't got no paper, you ain't got no notes. I said, okay, here we go. Okay. I got all my notes here. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that you can read that. Read it, but you <laughs> I got all my notes here. Okay. All right, okay. I'm gonna open up the phone lines. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead on. He wants to talk to y'all. He don't want. No, he don't want to talk no, to me. No, that's not the case. That's not. No, the he case. don't want to talk I'm to me. I'm loving. I'm enjoying talking to you. Yeah, he and don't. And listen to hear your uh, frustrations, but at the same time, he don't want to talk. I'm not on the council yet. <laughs> no, you ain't on the council, but you do know you can't do nothing about education, right? Well, that's not absolutely. Uh, well, what can you do about it? Well, here, here's what you can do. We have the authority to allocate some funding towards uh, educational programs. We can do that. We can vote on what, that. What, 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 with we, the we schools, can, with the school system? I'm not saying specifically with the school system. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, but we can carve out educational components. And if, if, if I push and say, look, we need to at least have $10 million set aside for job training resources in school, which I didn't on my table, you so, sitting us up. So at the end of the day, uh, that could better the the, the to to what group? Uh, let let me go here. Uh, Bigfoot, call me back. Bigfoot, call, call me on back. But you do know that as far as the schools Just, yeah, are concerned, you y'all ain't got no power or authority other than approving the budget. Bigfoot, call me back, man. You you will call me. Uh, because I, I want to hear was I want to hear from Bigfoot. Uh, in fact, hell, let me call Bigfoot my damn self since he was calling. Go ahead, Foot. How you doing, man? How you doing, Mr. Fine. How you doing? How you doing, sir? I'm doing good, man. It seems like you lost, man. Well. Man, Yeah, Bigfoot. Uh, okay, hey, Bigfoot, man. Thank you. I want to give a uh, respond to that. Um, first of all, uh, thank you for calling in. Secondly, um, as you know, I'm working to become a councilman. And the same concerns you have, I have. Um, have you, let me ask you this. Have you expressed uh, any of this to, the, to your local council member? Well, I, 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 I'm actually in full agreement with you. Uh, we need to have some accountability where the streets on Poplar are not the only streets that are being paved or certain streets. And my commitment to you is that I would work hard to see those areas in underserved areas that need to have the streets paved will be paved. Well, well let, let me say this, man, I, I'm, I, you know what, I've developed and, and, and actually been all over the city, you know, grandmother lived on Looney Avenue in North Memphis, so 
I don't I don't know what else to say to you besides two weeks ago. I know, I know. And, and, and I'm actually working and and and, and, and I'm I'm in a you know what? And here's the thing. Well, well, here's the thing on that. You're absolutely right. It needs help. I can't, I can't do anything about what the current people have or have not done. The only and, I, and I know that. So you're supposed to be ready to come to the table and tell us what you can do for the blacks in this well, city. Again, I'm tired of these Negroes that's, that's playing with us, man. Well, you know, you know what, sir? I'm going to say this. On that council, we have to have, it, the only way it's approved, it's going to take other council members to help us get that approved. Now, one thing that, one thing that I, you have my commitment on, is to go in and actually fight for those things because I want you to, I want you to on that you're not going to be sending blacks out for the white man. That's the main thing that's going on. That's, that's the key that blacks need to know in this city. We tired of black brothers coming to us with a nice suit on at a time, and as soon as they get off and get in the office, they sell the Negroes out in this city. Well, you got my you got my absolute commitment to that, sir. Foot, I'm gonna have to and see. Foot. Was the guy that had that multi million dollar contract okay. with the city? All right, Foot. Thank you, too. That's my boy, Big Foot. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hello? I swear for God I ain't gonna wait on y'all. 901-231-9239. My guest is Brian Salisbury, okay? And Bigfoot made uh, uh, made some good points. We don't have folk that's protecting the image of the majority in this city. Most of these Negroes scared of white folk. Go ahead, Barbara. Yes, I think it's good for you too. Mr. Sides trying to make a difference in our community. But I suggest that you get off that show before your reputation gets ruined. Have a good day. So your reputation gets ruined. <laughs> I don't know whether uh <laughs> that was towards me. What if it is? I don't give a damn. Well, you know, thank you for calling. You know, this is not about uh, reputation. This is about working to to do what's best for the citizens, and that's what I'm concerned about: the safety, uh, the growth of the city. Uh, it's not about my reputation. Uh, I'm here to listen as well as to give my input as to what I see have been some of the issues that. Uh, African-American communities have faced. 901-231-9239. 901-231-9239. Tara, thank you for calling, too. Um, we hear Memphis like Gas and Waller saying that they need an increase in the utility rates here because they want to do this, that, and the other. What is your idea of what should happen? Would you, as a council member, support an increase in utility rates? You know, for residents, absolutely not. Uh, these utility costs, in some cases, are a third to as high as 40% of residents' rent. Uh, so, uh, as far as corporations are concerned, the ones that are actually making money, if there's a way we can carve out, can increase on the commercial side, now that's a discussion worth having. Uh, but as far as residential, uh, especially, I believe there needs to be a rate decrease for the elderly, 65 and plus. Uh, these people are living on fixed incomes and it's the right thing to do. All right, here's your opportunity. He wants to hear from y'all. 901 Y'all <laughs> call. Y'all call. But Foot made some legitimate uh, comments. Potholes, citizens in this community 
tearing up their cars, city not paying quickly, poor folk tearing up the cars, um, and they can't get the cars fixed. Um, what would you propose? Would you put an ordinance in place or what? what, what first of all, let me not give you the idea. Mm -hmm. What is your uh, proposal for that? As far as the, uh, citizens call. hitting all these damn potholes in the city, tearing up their cars, and you got folks who are on limited income. Right. Uh, what would you propose that the city would do to quickly uh, reimburse citizens for uh, the alignments, the, the and, tires, and, and things absolutely. of that nature in the city? Uh, as a person that's been a victim of that before, I've hit potholes and knocked alignments. Uh, I think you know a budget should be established for that. If you're not going to take uh, do what you need to do, and the citizens are constantly reporting time and time again that this street has been uh, filled with potholes, it is the city's responsibility to 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 help those people recoup their loss by fixing their vehicles quickly. Expeditiously. Expeditiously. Y'all ain't calling the, the wannabe councilman now. He said he wanted to hear from the peoples. So peoples, that the number is. You live in the Raleigh, the Frazier, the in White the Haven. Uh, uh, call, call the number. To one of the phone lines keep going to voice man. I ain't got but one line to one line. So if you want to get in, call now, 901-231-9239, 901-231-9239. What do you think about the candidacy of Mr. Salisbury? Do you think he's going to make a good councilman if he's elected? And you're running, you're running against a political veteran uh, in Cheyenne Johnson. I ain't got no love for, uh, as for, they keep saying the phone line is busy. I don't, I don't know how the phone line is busy. Hell, I ain't talking. They'll call, call me on the number. Let me see it's. See what you get. It's busy? Huh. Tell you what, let's see. Let's take a quick commercial break. Give me maybe no more than two commercials. Give me a Willie Harrington. You support the mayor? I do. With a hairpin? I do. Okay. I thought you may be a Jim Strickland. Cut, Maybe. Cut your phone off. Do what? <laughs> Don't get in front of the camera, I'm not, Dale. I'm not. Do what? I can't. Okay. Let's go to commercial. We'll be right back. I'm sorry. I thought you was already it's in commercial. It's going straight to voice, man. Cut it all the way off. Outside, so uh, it's raining outside, so you've had some Wi Fi glitches. Cut it all the way off, then cut it back on, and I'm gonna try it again. She sneezed. She said, What? She sneezed. Oh, uh, give me another one. Give me a uh, Claiborne, that's about a minute and a half. Back on. Call me. Huh? Mm -mm. The Google subscriber you have called. Did you turn it off by accident? I can't hear it. Yes, you can. Huh? Yeah, you can. I ain't cut it off. It's 
a it's a uh, button where you can send it straight to voicemail. That's what it sounds like it's going on. Run some more commercials. Are you trying? Yes. There you go. Huh? Let's see. What? You back on. Did you call me? I did. Because ain't nothing showed up. Oh, Google Voice is trying to connect you. What's it saying? Delphine. You coming in on, on the regular line? Hello? Hello? All right, you good. All right, you good. All right. All right, bring me, bring me back. No. They'll fix it. <laughs> bring me back after, after this. Okay. And thank you. So I think Dale fixed it. To accept, press one to send a voicemail. Go ahead, call him. Yes, sir. Or even the or even there's a little bit of that we can have the button on the cop can have some on the streets that has those high crime prostitution and drugs. Right. Well, well, and, and, go ahead. Yes, I was gonna ask, I didn't know if you were finished. Go ahead. Uh, no, I'm not in there. Come on in now. Yeah. Come on in. Make your point, because I got other folks I need to talk to. Them. Okay. Okay. Uh, my point is, as far as uh, I think you know, uh, these these trucks some kind of revitalization, bring revenue and jobs, and these communities. Some of these companies, like Red Nike, is right. giving them these. Uh, uh, All right. Thank you, Carl. What's his name? Thank What's your name, sir? What's your name? Okay. Okay. You so, okay. What, what, I can't let y'all give no essays. Come on to your point quickly. Okay. Uh, 901-231-9239. Are you familiar with the COAC? Yes. What, well, was, want, what want, was COAC? You're talking about the, the, where, where the different groups come together in mm -mm. Uh, businesses? No, no. What? He was talking about police. Are you familiar with what the COAC was? Fill me in. What, 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 what was it? I shouldn't have to fill you in. If you're talking about clerk, then that's a that's a. No, no, I'm talking about the police department. And the, when we had independent uh, precincts Clerks. in the communities uh, that were patrolling. I sent the caller Okay, I'm sorry, caller. Uh, Co-ed. I, I, I know clerk, you know, whereby it was an independent. No, no. Co-ed was, it was in place under the Harrington administration that were independent precincts in various community that work with people in the community. They walk the streets, 
they were familiar with the people in those neighborhoods. Right. All right, 901 231 9239. I want to speak to the, the gentleman that uh, mm -hmm. just, just, I want to be clear. I don't support rioting, that's not what I'm saying. But I do support when citizens want to come out and voice their concern as to what took place. I do not condone anyone uh, rioting, especially when you're talking about tearing up your own property. I yeah, I'm getting in now. The the lines are open. Um, 901-231-9239. Come on in. But go and research COAG. The COAG unit. Um, was up under uh, Harrington. Okay. Uh huh. You said it was up under, well, uh, Mayor Harrington. Yeah, I mean, just go back. Okay. Go back. See, one of the things, Brian, and I don't mean no harm, when you're running for public office, you should know everything about that office. You should know everything about what has happened in those communities. So that when you come on a show like this, that you're prepared. Well, it's, it's, here's the thing that I say on that. I'm, I'm familiar with Clerk, but again, that is the program you're speaking to exactly. Uh, I've seen other cities have that. I ain't and, talking about, and, see, I'm not talking about other cities. And, and you keep taking me to other cities, and I'm talking about what has transpired in the city of Memphis. COAC was probably one of the most viable uh, things that under the Harrison administration was put in place with the police department. When you've got many precincts set up in the community so that the citizens know the officers that's walking the right. beat, that's riding the bicycle, right that they can go to this particular police officer and say, hey man, something is wrong. You know, I'm gonna give you this little tip. You know, leave me out a little bit, but. Uh, Absolutely. I'll definitely uh, look more into that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait a minute. Somebody's saying that it's still saying serve a visit. I don't know, it's raining. All right, to one, you trying to reach me Let's see, let's see, let's see. And it's programs like that that actually build better community relationships. So, absolutely. Okay. Um, I don't know what's wrong with the uh, with the phones. Uh, all right. Go ahead, someone. Hey, how are you, Sal? How are you doing? doing? Fine. Uh, I'm doing good. Here's my question. I am in District 82, the same district in which you are running. Yes. And I am, I've never seen you out here uh, putting your boots on the ground, doing things for the community. I have not seen you. And I'm going to piggyback off of what Bigfoot just said about the potholes. There are something you can do about the potholes. I've had several potholes fixed throughout the city. So I know that you can do Well, thank you for calling this, Twan. One thing I'm, I, I do and will do is I'm for the people. Uh, I, I'm here to listen as well wait, as... Wait, 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 well, again, I'm here to, to put real dollars back into our community. I want to lobby the council and, 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 and lobby very hard that our community look just as nice as well-off communities. Uh, it's no reasoning for potholes to be in the same community for the last two years. Uh, I was, as I stated earlier, I was a victim 
of some of those same potholes through the city. So I, I very much understand what you're saying. So if you're a victim of a 100, what happens if you did anything about them? To one to one, to one, to one, ain't nothing, ain't nothing he can do right now. now. I'm, I'm running. He running. <laughs> oh, yeah, because I, you know, I was gonna go. Yeah, yeah. No, bye, Tawana Murphy. <laughs> bye. Hey, Tawana. Uh, Tawana. I didn't know that was Tawana Murphy. Yeah, bye, Tawana. Yeah, it is. Hey, bye, Tawana. Tawana. Bye, Tawana. <laughs> we running, Tawana. <laughs> Vivian, Vivian, go ahead. Thank you for uh, allowing me to answer that. I, I know the name, but I, when he says, do you know her? I don't know her personally, is my, is my point. Do you know who Randall Catron was? I know the name, but I don't know him personally. Do you know the history? Knowing the name is not enough. You got to know the background. Do, I, I, do you know I, the history of how Bill Street uh, came, came into about. being? I do, do you know the history? I do know the history. Tell me the history. Well, actually, it was minority control. Uh, businesses were all up and down Bill Street. No, 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 Okay. okay. Thank you. You got to know the history. I knew that part. You knew that? Yeah, I knew that. I just don't know the people per se. Like I know them. So, all right. Let's see. Let's see if you really know it. Mm -hmm. What kind of contract does Bill Street Development Corporation have with the city of Memphis? What would you say? What kind of contract? Mm -hmm. Binding kind of contract? contract? Binding, binding contract? No, no. A management you say contract? You, know, you just told me I, you I, know I, the We history. made it on the contract. And our contract as it relates to that, we were responsible for the management of, of, of Bill Street. No. Did you, let me give you some history. Mm -hmm. Bill Street Development Corporation and the city of Memphis are equal partners right. in the contract. That's right. Under the contract that was mandated by the federal government, right. that there was dollars that supposed to go to the city of Memphis, and the city of Memphis was supposed to pay uh, Bill Street Development Corporation, of which they have never been paid, and this is over 25 years ago. Right. How do you think that uh, the pyramid was built? Right. How do you think it was built? It was built by financing uh, tax increment, tax credits. No. What had to happen for the pyramid to be built? When you say that, uh, I want to be clear about what you're asking as far as the land aspect of it. Yes. For anything to be built on Bill Street, what has to take place? You gotta have, you gotta get permission, and you have to have a lease in order to build. From who? Bill Street Commission. Bill Street Commission. Yes, the Bill, Street, the Bill Street Commission. The, 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 as far as the development corporation. You gotta get, you you have to have <laughs> the Bill Street Development Corporation has to sign off on anything that's built. On Bill Street. Correct. Anything. Correct. Go ahead. Yes, I would like to say that young man is actually here to fight. Okay, man. It's okay, man. I've been fighting my whole life. <laughs> I mean, not the pyramid. I meant the FedEx farm. Oh, I got you. I know what you're saying.
Come on, baby, you got you got to say it quick. You ain't got you ain't got no I ain't got no time to get no speech. We voted for him. Vote for who? You vote, baby. Hush, ma'am. You vote for who, ma'am? Okay, damn it. And then you hear me talking to you, so shit your ass up and let me say something. Damn. Y'all quickly forget whose show this is. We're going to go to college. You're on there. Yes, I was calling in regards to the candidate for um, city council. Yes. Just want the young man to know that he has my vote. I'm very impressed with him. Thank you, ma'am. You got my vote. Thank you, ma'am. And the blues will make you win. You already won. Baby, 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 baby. <laughs> that's real damn stupid for a grown woman to say if you looked. Damn it, we don't give a damn about how he looked. What the hell he gonna do? Damn. Let's move on from there. Thank you, ma'am, for calling. How the hell are you gonna tell me to move on? That's my show. <laughs> Damn it, sit there and do what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Which, thank you, you know, ma'am. If looks would do it, <laughs> I'd vote for him. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Baby, go play with yourself. Get off your damn self. Maybe you can run. Ooh. I don't do no caller ID. <clears throat> I don't do block call. Yo, in, in this city, with all that's going on, if looks could do it. Well, his looks don't impress me. Well, that is, let's, let's get back to the point. We, we got real issues going on that we're, I'm here mm. to work hard to try to do what's right for our city. And that's the bottom line. This is not Brian Salisbury. This is about the people and doing what's right. And, and I believe you need to, 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 to have people that can inter interpret contracts that's going to look out for our all communities, but namely the underserved community has been largely the African American community. It's time for Black folks to try to work together collectively uh, in their area. Go ahead. Yes, uh, how you doing, uh, Ms. Salisbury? How you doing, sir? Uh, like for, when you say a life church, meaning like a, a, the church that I attend into all the zip codes? Yeah, it's about six of them already, isn't it? Well, let, let me say this. Uh, I, I, no matter, I was raised, I was raised like this. Islam, I have Islamic people in my family. I have people, uh, uh, Baptist, Methodist. My goal is to do right for the citizens, period. My goal is to help get our citizens and help get our families out of poverty-stricken areas. Right now, you have average families working two to three jobs to make things meet. Th thank you, sir. Let me go, go to this. So. Go ahead, Rick. How you doing, sir? Thanks for your call. And, and let's go back when I say that. There are other variables within the contracting sphere that go beyond just a contract saying, well, look, we'll give 80% of the contracts to minorities. But what, what, let, let, me, let me finish, please. Let, let me just finish. For, let me finish for a moment. Let,
Thank you, Rick. Do you know who Rick Thompson is? I don't know that one. Okay. Rick Thompson is the head of the IBEW. Mm -hmm. uh, the electrical work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the employees, the union of the employees of Memphis Light Gas and Wallace. So he's very diverse uh, in contracts and negotiations. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Call from. So we jumped in on that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, they, 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 that's what you, that's what you do on the talk show. Yeah, exactly. Go ahead. Go ahead. I can't hear, brother, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Sir, I can't hear you. Talk up. You're on your minutes phone. Okay. How many minutes I got left? Speaking of minutes. Five. Okay. All right. I want you to take two minutes right now mm -hmm. and tell the citizens of District 8, Super District 8, mm -hmm. Position 2, mm -hmm. other than your looks, <laughs> why they should vote for you. Listen. Um, for me, it's about doing what's right by the citizens within A2 and within the citizens of Delta County and City of Memphis primarily. I'm concerned. No, City of Memphis all together, not Shelby County. Right, City of Memphis. Mm -hmm. And what I what I want to promise the city, the citizens, is that I'm going to work hard every day. Now, and listen, and be respectful, and be understanding towards. Uh, their concerns. Uh, I can honestly tell you, as far as contract review, I have an extensive amount of experience in that area. Uh, I've served in the union. I'm, content I'm right now a union member of uh, the Department of Treasury. So I understand the importance of that. We have to have dedicated dollars that are going to go towards youth programs. We got to have solid mandates they're going to ensure minority participation. Now, not only minority participation, but we got to be able to help businesses within our community to get the bonding they need in order to move to the next level. Those are some of the things that I bring to the table. Um, as far as uh, family man, I've raised three beautiful kids, and I look to, to, to be a servant for my community. This is not about popularity or looks. This is about going out every day and doing the right thing for our community. Uh, I'm not responsible at this point of what's taking place as far as the potholes. I'm not in, I'm not on council right now. I understand those concerns, but I'm not on council. As far as the community, I believe that uh, com the community has a right to voice their concern if uh, police actions are questionable. I believe that uh, a committee should be established that's a separate entity uh, from the police that will allow for uh, uh, particular community leaders to question what happened with certain instances involving um, black people and the police. I believe at the end of the day that we have to have education that will allow for us to expand upon uh, our current knowledge base and, and put us in positions whereby. Thank you. Uh, all right. Did you get that other thing? Did we? The, the, you know, you, That's it. I ain't got but two minutes. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, you got that other thing that Lowell Third put it up for me real quick. I'm not taking any more calls. To all of my guys, I'm going to do something special for you tonight. Those of y'all who, you, you little wang my things ain't getting hard. Y'all got erectile dysfunction. Tonight, I'm going to do it for you for tonight. Go to the website and order for five dollars on the website if you get five or more your shipping and handling is free there it is www.the-erector.com okay uh daddy thanks for having me yeah i didn't know who was going <laughs> go ahead Okay, hush, just hush. Let me finish this. 
www.the-erector.com www.the-erector.com Go to that site. You guys can get it for $5 tonight. Five, you buy five or more. In fact, y'all are just going to get you 20, 10 or 20. So you, um, uh, you can get your, get your thing on. There it is, www.theerector.com. Tomorrow night, uh, Miss Claiborne, Nicole Claiborne, will be back in the city. I mean, be back in the city. I was reading something somebody was sending me that was saying something. Um, she will be back on the show tomorrow night. Super District 8, Position 1. She was on the program last week. We're going to hear from her again uh, and give you, the citizens that live in her district, the opportunity tomorrow night to question her. Now, I've got other candidates who have purchased advertising. They're all welcome to come on the show. Dr. Harrison will be back doing this month, I believe. Um, but I don't do softball. And you're buying advertising from me does nothing but put your commercials out here and I give you the opportunity to be seen and heard. Impressing me is not the real issue. It's those of you who are watching the program. You need to be educated. You need to know exactly who it is that you're voting for, how knowledgeable they are. Is Sharita on the page? She was. She gone? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, how many minutes? Is my time up? Time up. Time up. My time up. Thank you, Brian Salisbury, for, for being me. on the show. Thank you for having um, me. Hey, it is what it is. You, the citizens, should always be informed. Be an informed uh, voter. Okay? All right. This election is going to be a hell of a thing this year. All right. Uh, don't forget, 6 o'clock in the morning, I'm on the radio playing nothing but the best in blues on 8M1600 WMQM. Until then, top of the evening to you. <clears throat> All righty. Another one bites the dust. I'm tired. Go get my drink or something to eat. What you going to drink on? I don't know. Probably give me a long. I have a. <laughs> on Wednesday nights, I go to.